Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial today, and this is going to be creating neon-esque visuals like my neon starter pack, which you can find on the Unity store. And I'm going to try and do this in under 10 minutes. And I'm doing it in under 10 minutes because <laughs> I've had people mention that the last one that I did was a bit longer than normal. So I'll make this one as speedy as possible. So what we're going to do is I'm starting off in Unity 2019.3. You can go below or higher, absolutely fine. You want to get the post-processing stack version 2, which can be found on the Unity GitHub. Or if you're in the normal version, of unity you can go window package manager and from the package manager you open it up and if you type in post processing at the top you will get the post processing version 2.2.2 on this current time and build that i've got you can just click install in the corner but i've already got it so i'm up to date okay so we can get started then what we want to do is we want to create a plane and some objects to move around in so we'll right click in the hierarchy click 3d object and choose a quad this is going to be our floor we'll get the rotate tool and we'll just hold control and we'll just move this around i'm going to set the scale to 666 number of the beast <laughs> if you're that way inclined um then that's going to be the floor that we've got to move around on and we can add another right click in the hierarchy project panel and add a cube this is going to be just our cube i'm going to just drag it above the current space we've got we're going to need a sphere or a player for this type of thing i used a just sphere so again through the object and we can use sphere and i will just again drag this over our plane we've got everything started for now what we might want to do here is create a skybox and a skybox to make it look a little bit more interesting we can right click on the project panel go create material and from here we can call this neon sky and over on the in the inspector on the right hand side you can go to shader skybox procedural and we can leave everything by default but we could just change the sky tin and ground to a blue and the other one to a blue and then what we'll do is we'll turn the atmospheric thickness down so we don't get bleeding between the edges we can go onto our lighting tab if you don't already have that you can go window rendering and lighting settings you can just drag your skybox into there it looks quite blue at the minute but we'll sort that out what we want to do from here is create our own texture to be able to use from what you've seen before so it's like a so it's almost like a crosshair texture we'll go file new i will have a 512 by 512 canvas i'm gonna get my rectangle tool and i want to set the rectangle color to white because that's what we'll use i'm gonna just i'm gonna add a rectangle to each of the edges and create a sort of hollow box all the way around. My other square tool, and I will just add one behind the rest, but you might want to go on to blending options, color overlay, and make sure it's completely black for now. And there we've got the very start of it. You can grab your guides from the top, snap them to the center, then duplicate to make two crosshairs in the middle are pretty much like so so this is the base to our texture we can save this one out now and it's going to be our mission map because everything white would be emissive and black wouldn't be so i'm just going to save that as a png as neon underscore texture underscore illumination we can change the colors on here for our albedo map so what we can do is we can select all these lines merge shapes so these are the ones that are selected. Now we could just create a color overlay and make them gray up and then select the background, affect the color overlay, maybe make it a slightly bluer tinge, anything you like really. And we can save it out like that as our just albedo texture. And if you haven't already, you can choose to import these into Unity. And once you're in Unity again, we can right click in the project panel, click create and choose material. Then we'll call this neon cube on our neon cube material we can go to the inspector and make sure that we add the albedo material to the albedo slot we can just add this to our cube like so you can already see it and now we need to enable emission so when we can enable emission we can add our own texture so we'll call that the neon the neon illumination texture and you can see the white edges were selected and they were highlighted you can adjust the colors of each of these as you see fit we could duplicate the neon cube material and just call this neon floor for instance apply that to our floor but you can see it's rather large so we can adjust the x and y to maybe 12 and 12 and you can see that we've got the floor currently made what we can do is we can add a bit of differentiation to our ball so we start adding a lot of different scenarios to our scene we can right click create material and we call this reflective ball change this to a yellowy color apply it to the ball that we've got 
we can increase the smoothness of the ball so we get a really shiny and you could even increase the metallic value so we get almost a metallic looking sphere and now from here what we could do is we could rename this quad on the floor to floor we could right click on the hierarchy create an empty game object we can reset the transforms and we can just call this floor because we'll duplicate some pieces for the floor i'm going to add my floor asset to the actual floor folder just to keep it organized i'm going to duplicate one with Control d knock it out and then hold v and i can snap the different edges together but because i put it into a folder it's all nice i could grab all three duplicate hold v snap each of the vertices together do the same we could do it again create an empty reset call this one walls we can grab one of these objects duplicate them put them into the walls empty game object folder rename this to wall we could pull this out as our duplicate rotate it 90 degrees you can see it's 180 if we grab the move tool again hold v hold v we can snap what you might want to do is grab the neon floor material duplicate it and we can call this neon walls and we can adjust this by maybe adding let's say a red to the neon walls and we can add it there so you can see that they're completely different do exactly the same duplicate these around hold v and we can snap around the very edges i'll complete this off screen remember if you do come to want to rotate something you might want to affect the pivot and put it to center so you can easily rotate multiple objects at the same time what we could realistically do is grab the neon texture and just make the illumination much lower on that just to make the water the floor look slightly different compared to everything else we could scale our ball down slightly just if you didn't like the size of it in comparison to the other objects we could add something in our scene called reflection probe so we can right click in the hierarchy light and reflection probe and once we've got reflection probe in here you want to make it the sort of realistically the center of your scene grab the bounding volume and we can just use these little points to affect the very edges of our scene here so you just want to make sure that it encapsulates all the areas top bottom and all the way around so you can see when it changes and then what we can do is we can set this to real time and you can see that the when I enable and disable the ball becomes more accurately reflected in the objects that we've got. I might scale my cube up by 1.5 in each of the X, Y, and Z. So now we've got it. And now you can just do exactly the same as you did with all the other assets and just pretty much duplicate the objects around and you can hold V to snap them against each other to create interesting little designs and shapes. And I just created a little cube, which is 0.5 on each X, Y, and Z. And so you can just create little versions of loads of different uh, sort of scenario pieces. We'll add a quick bit of post-processing to our scene now. So we can go main camera, we can add a layer and call this post-processing layer. And we want to add another, which is the post-processing volume. And from there we can set have it as our main camera is the trigger we can have the layer as everything for now we can set our own custom layer later we want to make sure it's global it has the weight of one and we want to create ourselves a new post-processing profile so we'll create new and it's already added it to our scene sample scene profile so we can click the main menu profile and we can leave it like so we can add an effect unity we can add ambient occlusion we can add auto exposure bloom color grading vignette and you want to select on your ambient occlusion press all to enable it we can able and add a little bit of intensity to it we can choose the scalable ambient occlusion just so it isn't as big around the edges you can adjust all the settings and the radius but you don't want to overdo the sort of effects you want to add a little bit of realism so we can adjust it very slightly we can add all to the auto exposure and reduce the minimum by about minus 0.20 just to make the overall saturation a little bit brighter and what we can do on our bloom is we can enable a bloom and select the intensity and threshold to about 8.5 and 1 then we can enable color grading which if we put it on high dynamic range and put the mode on the aces it will neutralize our scene quite a lot from being overly ridiculously bright and we can enable a vignette by pressing all and just moving up the intensity value just to sort of darken the edges of the screen a little bit we could select our reflective ball yet one last time and and add an emission to that and we can add itself its own color and if we put it more towards the yellow we'll get a bright looking sort of shiny ball and if you want to add another x uh, effect to your ball you can add a new component on your reflective ball type in halo grab that change the color to another yellow and what we'll do is we'll scale it down so 
it just encapsulates the very edge of what we've got in our scene and of course you can grab whichever other cube objects that you might want get the neon cube duplicate the material rename this to let's say red and we can apply that to this cube we can change that to a red object you could even change the emission to be red as well now i'll quickly go over the lighting if you've got the lighting tab open of the things that are going to be static and never move the cubes the walls the floor will never move so therefore we'll just set them as static so yes we want to change all the children go to lighting we can keep everything by default untick the gl real-time global illumination put the global illumination on bake add baked indirect you can keep or put on the progressive gpu light map if you've got that because it's much quicker you can keep the bounces on two and the default settings as is appropriate you can knock the um, light map resolution down to 20 and the padding down to two because we don't need massive settings for this very moment you can keep everything by default you can untick compress light maps enable ambient occlusion if you want to leave that we're going to put the resolution on low one thing you might want to do when you've got your scene you've got your directional light you want to make sure that it's directional you can change the color if you so wish you can increase the indirect multiplier to about three and even adjust it to any of the sort of directions you want if you want to change the sort of sun position i'll put it to here maybe then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure reflective ball my walls my floor and the cubes i'll make sure that i untick the emission from all of those objects because they're going to be taken into account when we do the light mapping if we leave the emissive values on and i'll give you the example and i'll do a test bake and i'll skip on so everything ends up being quite bright and overpowering if we disable the effects and do generate lighting again and you see when i redo the light making it's much much darker so then we can go back on our materials and enable the emission and it already looks brighter than we had before and you can just go around adjusting everything that you need to as time goes along so you can adjust your basic texture make it more like mine so make it really blue you can adjust the walls the cubes go as crazy as you want and this pack is available on the unity asset store for free so you can check it out and download it for yourself i did create a patreon really recently so if you're looking to support the channel be sure to check that out but thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe Cheers.